Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a brand new show. And uh, most of you know that we were on the air uh, a few weeks ago, in fact, uh, exactly 12 weeks ago, and now we're back on the air. And this year, this particular season, we're going to be dealing with a lot of things that are going to be helpful to a lot of people. And we want you to stay tuned because you're really going to be benefited by this program. Now, we are the Coltrane Conservatory of the Arts, and we are a music school. We come on the air to share with you. We come on the air to share with you the programs that we're doing over at the school, as well as talk to you about some of the issues that we feel will be beneficial to you. Okay, so now the first thing I want to do is talk to you something about, uh, tell you a few things about Coltrane Conservatory of the Arts. We are a music school. We do uh, train in all of the instruments, every one of them, even the string instruments. Before we were not training in the uh, string instruments, but we are doing that now. So we, so you can have your saxophone, your trumpet, your, your uh, bass horn, your baritone horn, your saxophone, your piano, your drums, and your violins and cellos and things that, that, of that nature. You can train on all of those instruments here at the Coltrane Conservatory of the Arts. Now, I'm going to ask you to give us a call here at the station if you're interested in any of these programs. Uh, you leave your name and number and we'll get back to you and explain everything to you. You see the number on the uh, television screen there, which is 312 760 uh, 10, is that 7, uh, 738 rather, 1060. So you can also call us at uh, 773 891 1875, which is our facility. Now, on today, we're going to talk to you about a very special subject. And this subject is called the law of of causality, the universal law of causality. And I'd like for you to call up somebody and stick with us because you're going to be, you're going to be benefited by this uh, greatly on today. Now the first thing about it, I want to uh, kind of explain this thing to you. Some of you may be uh, unfamiliar with it, others may be familiar with it. This is a very, very global kind of uh, law. In fact, it's a universal law. And uh, all of us come under it. Everything comes under this law. I want to show you a few things here that you can, uh, I hope you can see on your monitor very clearly because we're going to talk about uh, these things right now. And as you can see, the first one there, if, if we're going to straighten that up and make certain that you're able to see it very well, uh, the causes we make today shape the future of our tomorrow. Now, we want to talk about that just a few minutes because it's important for people to understand, for all of us to understand, that what we're doing right now is really what's manufacturing and, and shaping up tomorrow. You know, and there's no, there's no getting around it. What we're doing now is making the future of our tomorrow. Now, let's, let's explain this thing called the law uh, the universal law of, of, of uh, causality. First of all, many of you are familiar with Ralph Waldo Emerson. In one of his essays he wrote com uh, called Compensation, he wrote that each person is compensated in like manner for that which he or she has contributed. The law of compensation is another restatement of the law of sowing and reaping. It says that you will always be compensated for your efforts and for your contribution, whatever it is, how much, however much, or however little it is. So that the law of compensation also says that you can never be compensated in the long term for more than you put in. The income you earn today is your compensation for what you have done in the past. If you want to increase your compensation, you must increase the value of your contribution. So what? So how do we do do this? Fill your mind with success. Your mental attitude, your feelings of happiness and satisfaction are also the result of the things that you have put into your own mind. If you fill your own mind with thoughts 
visions and ideas of success, happiness and optimism, you will be compensated by those positive experiences in your daily activities. And we like to do more than you're paid for. Another what we call uh, part of the law of sowing and reaping is what is sometimes called the law of overcompensation. This law says that great success comes from those who always make it a habit to put in to put in more than they take out. They do more than they are paid for. They're also looking for opportunities to exceed. Now, the one thing I want to say to you is that uh, Frederick Douglass once said that man may not get everything out of life that he works for, but one thing is for sure he'll work for everything that he gets out of life. Now, Mr. Emerson spoke about sowing and reaping. This is the same concept of cause and effect. In fact, there is no difference whatsoever between sowing a seed and making a cause. Because when we sow a seed, we make a cause. And when that seed actually matures into some fruit, it's the same as the effects that comes into our life. The effect is the fruit. The effect is the fruit of the cause, of the fruit of the seed. So that we must understand that part of this process of sowing good seed is to be able to master our minds. Now when we talk about mastering our minds, this is something that is not easy to do. Thoughts fly into our minds from everywhere. And we have to be diligent. We have to be aware of this so that we can remove them immediately or disallow them immediately. Because they're going to come. They're going to come. Sometimes we're thinking about things that happened years ago or months ago or weeks ago, you see. And these things can actually choke off and block up the pipeline that brings good into our life. Now, this is a very physical description, you know, and we know that uh, these things are happening in more of a spiritual realm than they are a physical realm, but we need to speak physically sometimes in order to paint the picture of what's actually happening. So we're going along doing just fine and suddenly things start to go out of, out of uh, sort of uh, uh, culture, so to speak. Many times what happens, folks, and, I, and because I know we all have had this, this thought, what in the world is going on right now in my life? You know, what did I do to deserve this? I mean, why do I have to be going through this when it seems like everything was going so well? What happens, ladies and gentlemen, is there is something called condition in, in causality, in cause and effect. There's something called condition. In other words, when we make a call, and we made so many calls. Our life is really the products of all uh, the, the product of, of, of the, the, the cumulative causes that we've made over, over our life. I'll put it like that. Cumulative of, uh, effect. That's what we're looking at with our life. Now, if this is the case, nobody knows when, for example, if you plant, if you plant a, the seed of a peach tree on today, you can probably guess that it's probably going to grow some sort of peach within 
two or three months. But you don't really know that, you see. Sometimes it's delayed. It depends on a lot of things, including the soil, the soil mixture, the water uh, that is uh, put on it, along with other factors will determine, in other words, how cold the weather is, how warm the weather is, whether or not all of that is conducive. So we don't really know exactly when that seed is going to produce fruit. We don't know when the harvest is going to come. And you know something, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes something, some of those things that we talked about, like uh, water and soil content, sometimes they are not all the way fitting for this tree to grow the fruit that it's supposed to grow. And oftentimes, sometimes it will come off with fruit that is not very pleasing, in other words. So what's, the point I'm trying to make here is that when we do something, when we make a cause, and causes, and, and, and I, I want to point out before we go any further, that our actions, or let's start with thoughts, our thoughts, our words and our deeds make up who we are, make up our total life experience. And what happens is when we make a cause, a good cause, it's no way in the world that there's not going to be some good effect in our life. But the thing is, when does the effect come about? This is where the word condition comes in. When the condition presents itself that would allow for that call, that effect to manifest itself, it will happen. But the condition, we don't know when that condition, when the right time is going to be there for that to happen. And there's no way for us to know it. Our safest thing to do is to make as many good causes as we can so when, some, when an effect comes into our life, and we get effects all the time, as I'm sitting here, I'm on the end of an effect. I'm making a cause. But I'm also responding, so to speak, to an effect. Now, let me try to be as plain as I can when I say that we get good things in our life and we get bad things in our life. Sometimes the bad things, we wonder where they came from. Why is, it this hap why is this happening to me, of all people? I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm, I work with children. I'm always smiling at my neighbors. I'm very generous. I treat people the way that I want to be treated, etc. But again, I want to point out that we are all, we all possess this cumulative Cause, uh, a bunch of different causes, and we never know when the condition is going to be appropriate for the effect to manifest itself. Now, this is something that's, that, that um, you know, I don't like to talk about really all that much until I really get into this conversation of the universal law of causality and people know a lot more and understand a lot more about it. But even when bad things happen, you know, and I want you to write this down if you have to and listen closely, even when bad things happen, it cannot be attributed to anything other 
than a cause manifesting itself in our life. Because cause and effect is a very strict principle in the universe. And everything comes under cause and effect. Nothing, even a grain of sand, where it is on the California beaches or the Chicago beaches, was put there by some cause and ultimately some effect. And you say, well, this is an inanimated object. How in, in the world could it be under this law? I say that because everything is under this law. Everything in the universe is under this law. Now, we see some things happening sometimes, and we wonder, why did they happen? I, I've seen some things, folks, happen to some of the most wonderful people that you could ever meet. Exactly. How could that be explained other than the cumulative effect Hello? that's in our life? But this is such a wonderful person. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a caller, and I'm going to stop in a minute to take this call. As you know, this is an interactive program, and you are encouraged to call in if you have questions or comments. Yes, Who good am evening. I talking with, please? Yes, good evening. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing this fine uh, this afternoon, if you will. Yes, and it's so good to see you back on the air again. You know, I enjoy listening to some of the things you say, and the causes and effect is the most definite thing on earth. I mean, this is something 24 hours a day, 365 days in a year. But well, one thing that my program had taught me is this. Whatever it is that's living rent-free in your head or bothering you for you that moment, stop. You can start your day all over again. I don't care if it happened again. Just stop and start your day over again because if you let it drill into your head it's going to be festering into a nasty attitude it will make you different so again if something is bothering you or someone you think that's bothering you just stop and start your day over and if it take 10 times in a day it's okay but long you'll be okay listen i love to hear you speak i think you have a good guy um, I ain't going to forget our conversation about um, people's president, but I don't even want to get into him. But again, that was a wonderful idea what you were saying. Give, and give me your name again. Steve. Steve. All right, Steve. Listen, I want to thank you for uh, uh, your comments, and we want you to stay on the air. And uh, we decided th uh, to uh, move the program in a different direction. We all know what's happening in Washington, and I think we've given it enough thought. I don't think uh, that at this point uh, there's very much we can do by talking about it. What we can do is talk about some of the things that you just talked about in terms of not letting it drain us of our energy and take us off from where we want to go. That's the truth there. That is, that is the truth. But Thank listen, you. again, let me get out the air so I can hear your response, and thanks for taking the call. My pleasure. Take care. Yeah, and uh, so uh, this brother, I'm so happy to see that he is still with us, uh, and uh, we appreciate him and his commentary. Now, again, uh, it's very important what he just said in terms of each day. Folks, every time we wake up, every day that we wake up, we should look at it as though we are being reborn. Because when we, when we, when we finally leave this earth, you know, most of us believe that it's sort of like going to sleep, you see. And when we go to sleep, we're not aware of our bodies or, you know, what's going on in the physical world. So we're actually really, we're being, you know, for all practical purposes, you can say that um, we are being reborn every morning that we wake up. And we should look at that as a brand new day. We, we should also never, ever allow things to fester 
in our minds because all we're doing then is holding on to something that's going to hurt us. So we need to release everything, you know. And there's no place for hatred. Even a man like uh, 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 Mr. Trump, who's in the White House, and some of the things that uh, has, he's been doing uh, in the name, some of it in the name of Christianity. And I don't see how anybody can believe that, that Jesus Christ would, would, would do these things that he's doing. Not the man that we read about in the Bible. But the bottom line is that he's doing these things to children, to families, you know. And this is just not right. But we cannot dwell on what's going on in the White House. We have to dwell on what's going on in our house. And by our house, I mean in our lives. Each of us is responsible for our own life. And we're not going to be able to be happy, successful, or any of these things until we decide that the onus is on me. The responsibility, the total and complete responsibility to progress and bring my life into an orbit that I can appreciate is all on me and the confidence that I have in my own life, the faith that I have in this oneness that I have with this one single most important power, whether you call it God, Yahweh, or whomever, Allah, that one single source of all that we know, each of us is connected to it, and there is no exception to it. Our responsibility is to figure out how do I plug into this power, because most of us are unplugged. Most of us are unplugged, you know. When you put a television into an electrical plug, it starts to play some programming. You're able to flip the channels and find something that you, that you like. When you plug into, when you put your plug into this one, this single source, things start to happen in your life. You can turn channels and find all kinds of wonderful things that you like, that you want to get into when you do that. But many of us are fret to, 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 we want to put the responsibility of our life on something else or somebody else. See, it's a very good move on our part to be able to say, well, I prayed, I did the best I could, but God didn't come through for me. Some people said Jesus didn't come through for me. No, no, you didn't come through for yourself. You can't put that on God or anybody else, you know, because you see, when we are working through some unpleasant karma. When we're working through something that is unpleasant, we have to understand that if we work through it in the proper way, we can overcome it. If we work through it in the proper way. And the first thing we have to have is confidence in our own life. That's why you see behind me our slogan which says, never doubt yourself and never give up. Because the moment that you doubt yourself and you give up, there's no power that can help you at that point. There's no power in this universe that can help us once we start, once we doubt the power in our own life and give up. And when you see people who, who do that, they are struggling uh, very much with life. 
we have to believe that this power that exists, that's brought all this magnificent in create, uh, uh, into creation, that it's in us and can do those things that we need to do on this earth to be happy, to be prosperous, to get things done. Now, I, 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 I wanted to uh, go over one or two more things with you. Now, let's take a look at some of these things that are on the uh, sheet here. Whether good or bad, what we do in life is bound to return. Okay. Thought, speech, deeds, these bring about heaven or earth. Never in the history of life would the seed of apples produce grapes, but always after the nature of its own kind. When we make a good cause, good effects are made in our life. Mastery of the mind is profound and should be practiced every moment of one's life. Now, I spoke about that briefly a moment ago. We must master our mind. We have to disallow all negative thoughts. When, we have tried, when something is trying to drag us back into the past or to relive a negative experience, we have to disallow that. Because why should I go through that again? It was horrible the first time. And now I'm going to take myself to, to that a second time? Come on, folks. We must master our minds. And then, there really is no such thing as luck, the last one we have on the list here. There really is no such thing as luck. Good causes, whether known or unknown, bring about good luck. When we see, sometimes we see people and they have hit a big uh, jackpot in Las Vegas or maybe won the lottery, and we go, man, that person is a lucky individual. Guess what, folks? That person had that kind of fortune in their life. In their life was this kind of fortune, and when the proper conditions arose, it manifested itself. And you said it manifests itself in the, in the form of, of, of $200 million. And some people have, have, have won that much on the, in the lottery. Yes. You say that must have been a person who had all kinds of cumulative fortune in their life. And that's exactly true. Trust me when I tell you, it was not luck. So I want you to keep on thinking about these things and keep making good causes until we see you next time. Those of you who would like to get involved with our music training, remember you can call 773-891-1875. We'll give you more information on that. And we want you to uh, talk to some of your friends and tell them about our program because we're going to be talking uh, some more to you on next week regarding these life principles. So until the end, this is Joe Page the third, and we want to just before we go, we want to say we have a new board member, um, one of my own family members, my my uh, my my uh, my sister's daughter, uh, Barbara, who is working the board, and we want to uh, make certain that people know that uh, Barbara Gail Pace is with us on the day. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.